Okay, this is my um, a favorite interview. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. It's with one of our uh, first guests for short and sweet. Yeah, back then. The that food was cast like Heather and I used to do. years ago. Way back that, when. Right? Yeah, this is Rebecca Doyon, and she is uh, the owner of Sweet Reeves, which we'll talk about also. Uh, but she's also the co-manager of the Magnolia Community Farmers Market, which we've already heard from other guests that's uh, been that's been lauded as a smash success. It, yes. It has been. How are you, Rebecca? I'm well, thank you. Thanks for being yes, here with thanks us. Thanks so much for having me. It's great it's to see you again. It's a pleasure to be back. Yeah. I'd rather be back on uh, such a gloomy day, but this is fabulous, so. Uh, yeah. You did not bring key lime pie. I yeah, did. where is what, the key lime pie? What happened there? It was, well, oh. it was it's in the freezer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there a key lime pie at the farmer's market? That's what I wanted so to know. So the key lime pie, because it's a frozen dessert, um, it's tough to bring it into the market, but it is on our online platform. So if you order it through our online platform, I will deliver it to you in the market. Okay, okay. and yeah. for those who and don't know, it's a Sweet Reeb specialty. It is the signature dessert. Um, it's a frozen key lime pie with a vanilla coconut crust. It's been very popular in uh, Gloucester and other surrounding communities for coming up close to a decade now since I've been running it. Started it at the Aww. Rudder a uh, very long time ago and it's just expanded from there. I have my own little side business going on and it's the one of the most requested desserts so um but i would like to get it into the market actually i should mention start not this sunday but the following sunday if any of you've been to the market you know uh greg from the eclectic clam mm -hmm. and he sells his products some of them frozen he has a deep chest freezer in the market so starting two weeks from now i will be having the pies oh, in great. the market to be sold because i can keep them frozen thanks to greg yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the farmer's let's market talk about now. The farmer's market, so yeah. for the folks outside of Ward 5 who may not have yes. been yet, let's uh, let's get the A to Z on, on how this all works. Okay. So there is a uh, team of six of us that all uh, we work year round to um, bring this market to Lexington Avenue. Um, this is our third season. And thankfully, we are back on Lexington Avenue this year. Last year, because of COVID, we had to... Um, amend our plans and we did an online um, platform only where you were ordering online and then we had a contactless uh, drive-through pickup where you pre-order, uh, you pay, uh, vendors were delivering the goods to us. Uh, we were set up in the back parking lot of J.D. Myers and Friends. Mm -hmm. um, owner uh, Lloyd Waits, for anybody who knows Lloyd, is wonderful and so supportive of what we're trying to do to build community and really kind of get um, Lexington Avenue busy again and um, so he let us set up in the back parking lot and we kind of just had like a drive-through situation going where we had all the orders packaged um, people would come through pop the trunk put it in and off they went it was a huge success and so you guys were pre-packaging all everyone's orders. So they just picked, they would order from different vendors. Yep. It all ended up in a box, and they picked up their box and left. Correct. So amazing. Greg, who I mentioned before, he's also one of our team members, and he um, is in IT, and he set up a, a wonderful website for us where um, each vendor had their own, like, shop, and you could just go and click on their shop, see what they're ordering, add it to your basket, pay through PayPal. We would get the order. Um, send it to the vendors. The vendors would bring us their their goods, you know, on Sunday morning. Um, we would package them all up in boxes and bags and then just um, pop it in the back of people's trucks for mm. them. And um, like I said, the people were really reliant on that particular service that they could mm. still have access to locally produced uh, fruits, vegetables, um, food entrepreneurs, all of the really amazing, we have a lot of food entrepreneurs in mm. Gloucester, so it was really great to put a spotlight on that. Yeah. And Jen Holmgren was just talking about how it was also great to just see people for a little bit, even masked. It was just this thing that sort of united this little community for it was during a hard time. a real yeah. blessing to be able to have people come through wave through the window yeah. you know we were all masked um but just it still brought that sense of community right. in a period of time where we everybody really needed it yeah so it was it was really nice that um we were able to to pull it together quickly because we were worried you know how are people going to respond to this format it's a farmer's market farmer's markets traditionally um it's a very social event and and as we all know covid restricted all of that right um but there was still that element of um, we had regular customers that we knew were coming through each week and it, and it uh, really helped to maintain those relationships 
and um, bring the community together. It was really nice. Mm. So now the market today, it's, it's Sundays, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., yes. all along Lexington Avenue? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we close Lexington Avenue from the top of Lexington down to Flume. And um, we've got anywhere between 12 to 15 vendors uh, on the street. Um, we always have musicians. Um, so there's a, that social atmosphere is back. Um, we are still offering the online platform. So if uh, oh, consumers great. are still feeling comfortable. Yeah, so depending on what people's comfort levers are, we didn't want to remove that service in case people still felt that they needed that until everybody really felt uh, comfortable. So we have done uh, like a hybrid model. Mm -hmm. So um, you can go shop online. We do have vendors online and it would be the same format, you know, place your order, uh, add it to your basket, pay through PayPal, and then you just drive, um, instead of going through the, the back parking lot, you just drive up Flume, mm -hmm. and we have one of our um, team members, David Kelly, who pop your trunk, put it in, and off you go. Hmm. So, That's great. Yeah, so it's a nice format to be able to offer until people really feel comfortable kind of coming back out into, into the public and emerging from COVID. So is the are you still looking for vendors at all for any of the weeks playing out through we the summer? We will always be looking for vendors. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so we've been very fortunate that um, in our third season, vendors are now starting to seek us out, which is phenomenal oh, because that's, that's where we wanted to get. Um, we are a smaller market, um, but what that allows us to do is um, really focus on being a community and having um, contact with our, our vendors regularly. Um, we do a lot of uh, market metrics. We want to know how they are doing in the market. We want to know how their Sunday went um, because that gives us direction on mm. what we need to be doing to further uh, advertise the market, what type of vendors we need to be pulling in. And we really want the spotlight to be on two things. Um, we want to provide a platform for some of these smaller businesses that are trying to build their customer base, get their product out there, get their names, get their faces, and, and meet people. Um, so we are always looking to provide that platform. Um, and then we also, uh, we're very community centric. You know, mm -hmm. Magnolia, as we know, is a beautiful seaside community. The neighbors are always walking around. Um, so we really focus what we are, are building on uh, being, uh, very community supportive so we're mm. always looking to bring in new faces yeah absolutely mm -hmm. so no, I not, let's go ahead Heather. i have to ask yeah. um are there any of our local farmers at the market yes yeah. so um bob marshall oh, marshall's farm stand yeah uh, gloucester's uh favorite farmer yeah he's been a cornerstone of the market since day one uh, a very big supporter of ours. His son Jason is there. I love Jason. Uh, Jason's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. The, the Marshalls are amazing. Yeah, um, as a family and as a, and as a business. Um, so Jason is there. He's usually right at the head of the market. And then we actually have um, three other farmers. We have Farmer Dave, who comes to us from Drinket, uh, another large farm who does a lot of. Um, in addition to all their fresh produce, they do a lot of uh, really great baked goods. Mm. In fact, my youngest daughter is addicted to their pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, that's say, saying something, being mm -hmm. your daughter. I, I know, <laughs> right? I'm like, you know, she's like, no, ma, I, I need to go get it. So every Sunday, we have to get our, our pumpkin chocolate chip cookies from Farmer Dave. So they're, they are there, and they're a phenomenal asset to the market. And then we have two smaller farms that come from Beverly. We have Saturn's Garden. They're an all organic farm. They're new with us um, this season. They're family run. They do a lot of um, uh, a lot of um, seedlings and plants um, and oh, to wonderful. help. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they also have their own CSA, so they're available. And then we also have Skip's Place, which is a um, fantastic farm that is women owned, coming from Beverly. Um, I I think she said she's got 15 acres or five acres. Anyways, she's um, she's an RN, oh. and she's uh, very focused on how food is medicine. So she brings some really unique things into the market that you might not see with some other farms. So a couple weeks ago when she was with us, I actually purchased from her um, ground cherries, which I'd never heard of before. Oh, I love them. In the little I, husk? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, so it's yeah. from, the, that's the, the tomatillo. Um, right, but it's yellow inside. It's yellow, and it's, um, I believe it's a vegetable, but it has a sweeter 
flavor and she hooked me when she said it's kind of nostalgic kind of like how fruit loops and i was like salt <laughs> if i can eat fruit loops healthy perfect yeah <laughs> so yeah so she um she brings a lot of really interesting information into the market because she just knows how to um grow and use food to sustain the body and that's what it's all about right Good to talk to her. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's enough. great. Yeah. Sorry, Reeves, if people want to learn more about the market, how can they go about doing that? So we are, um, you can find us online, uh, magnoliacommunityfarmersmarket.com. Um, email us, magnoliacommunityfarmersmarket at gmail.com. We have both a Facebook page and an Instagram page. So we, we are out there. It's very easy to find us. Um, and, uh, in, and we're on top of it. So if we hear from you, you will hear back from us. Oh, that's Sounds nice. great. Yeah. Well, we will write and we will visit. Excellent. <laughs> Please do. It's yeah. a lot of fun. We we'll see you. Sundays at 10, Legington Avenue yeah. in Magnolia. Yeah. So Magnolia Community Farmers Market. Rebecca Doyon, thanks thank so much you. for your time. So nice thank to you see you. Yeah, great job with all of that, too. Thank it's you. awesome. Thanks, guys. Right. Very cool. All right. All right.